All right, so my test case here is uh, just a restaurant um, business. And what I want in this design is really to populate here um, first name, last name uh, on the front here, and then I want um, all this mailing information here on the back. Um, what you'll see is that in variable data uh, printing, you can do, you can go further than that. You can do like job titles or things like that in a, in a printed piece. And so um, that's really what I wanted to show you um, in, this, in this demo here. So here I have three image boxes and I want to make these images change based on what this customer maybe ordered in the past, right? Um, so I'll uh, draw out uh, these new boxes and they don't have to be anything special because they're just going to be completely filled with uh, imagery. But actually, you know, you can add strokes to these boxes, drop shadows to these boxes, whatever um, you want. Um, they could be just transparent PNG files that are placed in here, regular JPEGs, etc. Um, but the, the, the point is, is that I have these three different images here. Uh, so um, a big part of uh, how this is done is that is uh, through Excel. So usually in a customer relationship management system, um, you are going to have, and I'll delete these columns for for the time being. Um, you're going to have you're you're going to have basically a spreadsheet with a bunch of different fields. So um, first name field, last name field, address uh, field. So the address field really has um, uh, two address fields. One is typically has an apartment or something like that, and then one has an address, a suite sometimes. Um, and then, of course, you have your city, state, sometimes even country, if the, um, the brand goes like to different countries and so on. Um, so one of the first things that you want to do if you're um, dealing with imagery here is um, you're going to want to make extra columns for these images that you want to work with in here, these variable data images in the piece. Um, so what I'll do is actually um, uh, add those uh, fields, and you're going to have to add those manually in Excel. Um, but the way to do that is you um, actually name this in a certain way. So what you have to do is um, do this uh, apostrophe mark, and then you do an at symbol, and then you just give it whatever name that you want. So I'm going to say photo one. And then once I click off of this cell, this, um, this apostrophe symbol is going to disappear. Um, the apostrophe symbol's purpose really is to tell Excel, hey, don't like, um, uh, don't, don't think that I'm trying to create like an Excel formula out of this with this at symbol. I'm just trying to um, have this at symbol be part of the name uh, so I can place images into InDesign. Um, so, and that at symbol InDesign recognizes that as an image. Um, so I'm gonna actually copy and paste these, uh, this column name in here, and then I'm gonna name these columns photo two and photo three. All right, and then I'm just gonna save it like that and I'm just going to go back to InDesign and I'm going to um, work on this design a little bit more. Uh, my next step, uh, what I want to do is actually place um, one of these images in here. Um, so I want to go to File, Place. And um, so this is the folder that I have all the demo files and you can find these files on uh, the uh, Moodle. Um, so you can download this and kind of go along and I have a final Excel file and I have a beginning Excel file there. Uh, so the beginning, beginning Excel file is going to be just kind of stripped down and blank, just kind of what I'm going through in the demo here. Um, so one of the things I'm going to do is actually when I place my file, I see I have a catering folder, a pizza folder, and a sandwiches folder. So let's just say, for instance, that we knew that um, uh, certain customers within our database ordered pizza from our restaurant last time they were there. Um, and, and that's reasonable to assume that that's possible, so um, just based on CRM systems. So you can uh, navigate to pizza and just select the first image and then hit open. And so it's going to place it in there. And what I'm going to do is Command-Shift-Option-E to kind of size it down. And, um, and then really, that's, I'm just going to leave that there for now. What I want to do is actually click on this image box, and I want to um, go to my links folder or uh, panel. So I'm going to go to Window Links. And see, in my links panel, I kind of stretched this out. But what, I, um, what I'm wanting to pay attention to here is this path uh, link down here. Let me see if I can get it kind of higher up on the screen. Well, anyway, it says path over here, and it has this big, long path file name. And I can actually just copy that by um, control-clicking on the link up here. 
and then going under copy info and copy platform style path. So what that means is really the platform is either Windows or Mac, and then they have different styles of, of, of identifying where a file is within a file structure, whether it be colons in the Mac case or backslashes in the Windows case. So if I go to a copy platform style path, InDesign is going to copy the full file path here for me in the appropriate, um, in the appropriate uh, way based on if I'm working on a Windows machine or, or a Mac machine. So then I'll go back, I'll close this thing out and go back to my spreadsheet. And I'm literally going to copy that path and paste it over here into this photo area one. And so here's, the, here's what the path looks like. And it says, you know, Macintosh HD users, my name, desktop, variable data, demo. It's just, just the folder path at which this file is located on my machine. So um, what I want to do is actually copy these beginning parts of the path um, that go all the way up to pizza and then colon. And I want to copy that and paste it into photo two because I know my other images are at the same file path, right? And what I'm going to do here for photo two is I'm going to actually add, instead of this Shutterstock photo with this random number JPEG for photo one, I'm going to go to the next photo and add the, new, add the name of that next pizza image just to keep it uh, kind of um, different, you know. So I'm going to do command A on the file name, copy it, and then paste it here. And then, um, and then I'm, again, I'm going to copy the same beginning of the path and then I'll paste it for photo three there because I know that this user on this on this line here bought pizza last time they were in there based on this uh, RCRM system and what it's saying. Sometimes it'll label them um, uh, or something like that. It'll add some kind of a label in the system. So I'll just paste that right there and that looks good. So um, and then I'll kind of repeat doing that so I know like the, the rest of my file paths are going to be this part all the way up to variable data uh, demo and then it, it's going to have a different subfolder for another product so one was catering as you know we had the catering folder here so if I just copy that beginning path and go to that catering customer and just start typing in catering and using my colon uh, marker copy and paste that over to each column and then go to the catering subfolder and then just copy each catering image and then paste it in its respective uh, photos column. <coughs> Oops, I accidentally opened that. So there's a preview. Just so hit enter and copy. All right, so then that part's done. Um, and then finally, I have the sandwiches category, so I'll copy that. Um, so I'll copy everything. I included catering there, but I want to replace that word with sandwiches. And then I'll just copy the identical file pass as such there. And for each image, then I'll just copy the photo name. and just paste it in for each one. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Uh, so then, you know, typically in the system you would like want, you would ha have this sorted, right? So um, I would have um, my group of, of pizza people that I purchased in, in one set data set. Another data set would have a catering people and another data set might have sandwiches people. You can export these spreadsheets different ways and then you can copy um, all these names and contacts over into a single spreadsheet if you wanted to. Um, for the purpose of the demo, I'm just going to actually um, copy uh, these pizza folks, these pizza image file paths. And I'm just going to kind of paste them uh, randomly to fill in the rest of this just to kind of show you um, sort of how this would, this would work for each individual user. And so I'll go to the next data set and then I'll paste those in just to fill in everything else. And then our sandwiches people. All right. And fill the rest. Okay, and then I'm going to save it. All right.
Uh, all my information is good. And I'll do another save here. Okay. So that should save. And so I'll go to my um, document then. And so the one, the one column that I want, what I want to do is actually delete this image now because I have the file path that I captured from that that I need, um, that base file path that I was able to easily copy and paste those paths over in the uh, Excel file. And uh, what I want to actually do is go up to Window and Utilities. And here I want to select the Data Merge um, option. And so the Data Merge option is just, a, is just going to give you this window and it gives you some uh, instructions on how to use this. Um, but essentially it's pretty easy. You just, um, you just go to this menu here up at the top right and then you hit Select Data Source. And then so once you select this Select Data Source option, you could go to, and I had that beginning Excel file that I just did, so I'm going to select that one and hit Open. And then so, uh, um, just like with your object layer styles uh, between uh, uh, Photoshop and InDesign, uh, Excel and InDesign does the same kind of thing. So here under my data merge column now, I have variables for first name, last name, address one, two, city, state. These are all the columns that were in my in, uh, Excel document. So then what I could do in my design is I can go and um, select these individual fields to where when I was designing I knew that my first name, last name, and all that other stuff would go. Um, and then I would select them, I would just highlight them, and then, and then over here in the data merge column I would just hit the corresponding um, uh, field in my Excel file that I want to map all the data to. So um, now you can see it's going to add like an extra caret here so once I click. So here now it's turning into double carrots. So first name, last name, and their map. So and this is kind of like the um, paragraph styles too. Like if I select it, it'll highlight in this uh, data merge column and you know that those things are mapped together. Another way I could know is if I hit this preview button down here in my data merge column, and I can see that when a preview is checked, um, I can see actually a preview of those populated fields. So my first and last name is there. And if I hit this next arrow, I can see the next record is Bruce Silver, and the next record is Beatrix Cutlin, and the next record is Deborah, blah, blah, blah. So you can kind of see a pre preview of what, um, what is, this design is going to look like record by record. You might have like thousands of records too, you know. Um, uh, so, so it's not really, it doesn't make a lot of sense to like go through all of the records, but just to get a gist of it, of course, a lot of people have long names too, so there's other things to consider. And InDesign lets you, uh, uh, sort of protects you in that it says, oh, you have overset text in these text boxes if when, when you go to the exporting this out. And so um, on the photo side, I want to select one of the photo boxes and actually want to uh, just like literally drag and drop this photo um, icon into where the photo box I want is going to be. So photo two, I'm going to drag and drop there. And photo three, I'm going to drag and drop there. So um, if I want, uh, there are some options for when you place photos as well. So um, what you can do is actually go up into this, uh, this extra menu up here on the right. And um, you can select content placement options. And so content placement options basically lets you select, do you want to center these options in the frame? Um, do you want to um, do all these different things? Do you want to fill frames proportionally? Um, and so on and so forth. So you can, you can actually have a, sort of an automated way of placing these images too um, as you go on. So, um, so now to check that these images are accurate, uh, for my first user I have these images. And then when I click the next preview button, here's all my catering, it looks like, stuff for Bruce Silver. And then here's all my next image. Takes a little bit. Uh, and uh, for this Beatrix uh, lady. So then if I keep going, it's going to just cycle through all of the data that I put into the spreadsheet, and then it'll just change the design as, as accordingly. You can jump to different people. So if I change this number to 1, I'll go to the first person. Um, if you wanted to, you know, randomly pick, you know, a number in this list, you can just, you know, go ahead and do that too. Um, so it looks like everything's mapped properly here. And then so on the back, of course, under the address part, I'll do the same. So I'll replace first name. I'll replace last name. I'll go into address one. 
just and I'm just clicking address to click um, this is an apartment so sometimes if they don't have an apartment or something like that we'll be able to um, uh, just that line will be skipped that record will be blank and I'll kind of show that I'll hit city uh, state and zip all right so if I go to the next record let me see if that has an apartment yeah, so that apartment is gone So for the next record. So for address 2 in that column, it's totally blank uh, for this individual. So um, it doesn't have, it, it won't put uh, address 2 in there um, unless there's some kind of a record. All right, so once that design is done, there's an interesting way to export this. Um, so what you would actually do is export a PDF uh, a file. So it's going to take all this art, and instead of packaging an InDesign document, it'll export a bunch of print-ready PDFs so you could send to the printer, and they'll just run it and then stack it for their mailbox and then send it out. So um, what you could do is actually go to this top corner again and hit Export to PDF. So, so this is going to turn the preview off, and um, there's a lot of things you can do here. Um, one of the things you can do, let's say, is if, if, let's say your design was like name tags for a conference or something that you wanted to print out on a big sheet of paper and then later cut down. You could, um, you could go to this um, multiple record layout option. You could define the margins of this image um, uh, on the sheet um, and, then, and then do a repeat placement of the design with the different records that way. So. An example would be like um, uh, uh, like name tags or something. In the past, I've done um, other things uh, with it, mostly name tags that that, that I can remember. Um, you can also uh, choose records to merge here: all records, a single record, or a range of records. So um, records being those um, items in Excel. Um, so I'll do records one through three. I'll do a range um, just because it takes a while for these images to generate and that type of thing. So uh, I'll do the range and then I'll hit OK. And then it's going to go to this export PDF uh, uh, standard uh, dialog box document. Um, so this is just the one that we'll always see when we export a PDF. And then I'll continue on export. And then I'll just do, um, just name it and save and then it's going to start generating this thing it's going to download the images each one and then export now these images are probably a little too large so I'd want to um, so I'd want to make sure that if I was working with images, I don't, I wouldn't want them to be too big, especially if I have a lot of um, a lot of uh, records to do, like in the thousands, perhaps. So um, once it's done, uh, InDesign is going to say there was no overset text generated my while merging records. So again, overset text would be too much. Like say the last name was gigantic and it just pushed all the text outside of the box. It will warn you if that happens, so um, so you're not like sending something to a printer that might not be right. Um, so then the end result then is this PDF document, and then so I'll open this thing up, and so this is six pages, which makes sense because it's got um, there's basically uh, three designs, right? So page one is the front of of uh, design one or postcard one, and then page two is the back of design one and then page three is the front of design two and then page four is the back of design two and then so on and so forth page three and then page uh, I'm sorry page five and page six you know with all those different records proper so then um, then essentially what would happen is you would send this document to a printer like Kinko's or a Digicopy um, tell them the specs, say, okay, this is a 5x7 or a 4x5 uh, postcard, um, and, um, and there's, there's three designs here. And then they would print them out, cut them down, and then either mail them for you or that type of thing. All right.